Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we only really got to the first question. Yeah. All right, good morning. Good morning, good morning Pastor. Welcome to Sunday School and Bible Study. We are glad that you are here. Um, we are in the Bible study going to try what we tried last week. We got through, uh, I think we read John 1, that was about it. But So the I had papers in the back, but they were only ones that were left for me. So hopefully you have yours from last week. But I think they're gone now. I don't see any out there. So there's one back there somewhere. Okay. Well, it is the same paper from last week. Uh, session 11 on the incarnation of Jesus. Or if you want to get real fancy, I put a PDF on the church's Facebook page last Sunday. So you could look at it that way on your phone if you felt so inclined. But first, um, let's begin with a prayer. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this day and for this chance to be uh, together this morning in your house. We are always grateful and thankful that your word has been presented or being presented to us in a way that we can see it interact with us. Be with us during our Sunday school and Bible study hour this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we shall take a look at those who have birthdays and anniversaries and baptismal birthdays this week. And it looks like we have some of all of those this week. We have Brock and Tom and Janice who will be celebrating their birthdays this week. Okay. I see you back there. I had to take down the reading glasses. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's sing the birthday song then, please. Thanks for our friends who celebrate another year they contemplate the life you gave them here on earth. Praise to the Lord who gives us birth. All right, we got Don and Judy have an anniversary coming up this week. All right, 34 years, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. All right, let's sing them the anniversary song. Thanks for two friends who celebrate yet one more year in this estate. Praise God who made their flesh unite. Praise to the Lord for this. And we have some baptismal birthdays coming up for Ben and oh. Madeline and Lou Ann and, and this guy, oh, yeah. Scott Baker. Yeah. 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 <laughs> baptismal birthdays coming up this coming week, so let's sing to them our baptismal song. Thanks for our friends who celebrate another year you consecrate. Praise God who baptized them below. Praise to the Lord, his church to grow. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll let the Sunday school teachers and kiddos make their way. The rest of us are going to look at John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 and 14. If you're looking for me in your Bible somewhere. I showed up yesterday for the or the breakfast thing. Bob Garrett. No. No. Bob, uh, let's see. Uh, Robert did. Yep. We are in John chapter yeah, yeah. 1. Verses 1 through 3 and 14, and then also John 8, 50. I think that's where we read it, and then we didn't get to finish. But that's okay. Marilyn, myself, Steve, and... Is there anything or any, anything that wants to share this morning before we get started? Good, bad, or otherwise? Now's your chance. I attended my second cousin's wife's funeral Friday, and my second cousin had a episode of something they hauled him away in the ambulance and we haven't heard 
From the How funeral. He is. From the funeral. From the funeral. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. The last time I heard about it was that he was getting an uh, injection of blood. So he had no blood count or something. Oh, okay. That was the last word I ever heard. So had a low blood count, so was getting a transfusion? transfusion? Yeah. Right. yeah. Injected in. Okay. So when I walked in, I was in the first thing up there. Uh huh. And, uh, he just had stone face with the item and the upper plate was part of the pulse. It was kind of hanging out. But he looked like he was dead. I said he was sick. And they couldn't get any pulse out of him at all. Oh, wow. So it was worse on him. Third check of the day. He was in and so on. He was in and revived. Okay. And then his uh -huh. nephew was there and they discussed the situation. All right. Thank you. This is a very good friend of me. He was my best man at two weddings. Okay. <laughs> That's a good story. Uh, Pastor Don not here this morning. You may have noticed. Dodie's here, but Pastor Don is not. Uh, fell off a ladder. Oh. The Friday. While Dodie and my wife and Joe were in Kansas City, he was trying to trim the branch that was on his uh, cable TV wire and fell and hit his head. Had a goose egg about this big on the back of his head right here. So took him to the emergency. I got a call from Dodie saying he, he was going to drive himself, I think, to the emergency room. So I went over and picked him up. I took him to the emergency room. He had a CAT scan. Everything was fine. His was he said his brain is still in there is what he told me. Yeah, so. <laughs> he remembered it all. He didn't pass out. They didn't call it a concussion or anything, but just super sore. And I think now his hip is starting to hurt a little bit, but he remembers. He just doesn't remember. Well, he remembers trying to trim the branch and then falling and then getting back up and went back in the house and started watching TV or something. But that thing was it was about this big, about this far off his head. It was a it was a good sized bump. So he's taking the day off today, right? He's gonna he's gonna rest. And Greta, of course. Yeah, and Greta was diagnosed with shingles mm -hmm. from her ear to her mouth and on her tongue and her teeth hurt. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she's but she's getting better. She's been to the hospital twice, doctor twice, and she's getting better. She was she was in bed the whole week. She got up yesterday and made a few phone calls and watched a little TV. So she's getting the better. She was supposed to go to Florida. Yes, she had a... I'll tell you, if you have a airline ticket or you're buying one, that insurance you buy for your ticket, we didn't buy it. And you lose your ticket price. Now, they let, if you, if you uh, schedule ahead, they let us uh, give us about half of it. So that was with Allegiance. You see, she was flying there. Okay. Anyway, you know she's sick if she's too if she canceled a Florida trip. Can she still talk? What's that? Can she still talk? Yes, she can. But not much. But not much till yesterday. Yeah, it's quiet around there. Oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you all for the prayers. Yes, we got you. Mm -hmm. I got a call from Heritage, and uh, Joni and I went down to see my mom because we didn't know she knew the flight. Okay. And she's I asked the prayers that yeah. she her be peaceful. Okay. Did she know you were there? Yes, okay, and we, we went in the morning and then went and had breakfast and came back again. And she was sitting up in her chair and smiling and interacting. Okay. So. Okay. We'll pray for her. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> we got cows out, so they're discussing. <laughs> ah. You got cows? Got cows out. 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 They're out of their. Meaning, not where they're supposed to be. Oh, 
Oh, oh no. Country problems, I don't know how this is. Continuing to look at the miracles of Jesus, and the eleventh miracle that we're studying is Jesus' uh, incarnation, him be becoming a man as God at the same time. And so, we got a chance to kind of talk about the introduction last week, and then we were talking about other things and didn't get a chance to finish. But that's totally fine with me. But what we need to remember is how we uh, kind of that's what the discussion kind of got to is how do we see Jesus as both God and man at the same time. And so I gave you a little catechetical instruction of how we teach that in the Lutheran church about, do you remember what the two words were that we used to describe it? Oh. Uh, Joe and Jennifer, you cannot answer. Thank you. Exhortation. Exaltation is one of them. That's when Jesus was fully using his God power. We'll call it that. And humiliation is when Jesus was fully using his human side of himself. Human power sounds like Superman, you know, he yeah, takes his uh, shirt off. And Clark Kent with the glasses on, he can't tell the difference. We talked about that a little bit, but yeah, right. So God, as God, Jesus could do everything God can do because they share all the same characteristics. So he didn't have to die. He could have just got himself off the cross. He could have not taken the beatings that he got. He could have done a lot of things. He could have never been hungry. But as a man, he, he felt those things, and those things had to happen. But then as God, we saw him perform miracles. We saw him rise from the dead and ascend into heaven and to do all kinds of things. And so those are the, kind of the two words, the two ways we describe Jesus as being God and man at the same time. And then a little later on in our study, we're going to talk about why did he have to be both of those, which is also uh, something that's super important to us to understand. And I want to give that away, because then uh, we won't have anything to talk about later. <laughs> yes, please. That I think is in today's devotion and for prayer is talking about when Jesus appeared to the yeah. to the uh, disciples after his crucifixion, mm -hmm. and he he told them to touch him, to put their hands in, the, in his side, and his and and the human. I mean, it was human flesh. He asked them for something to eat. Well, and then he vanished before their eyes. Yeah. He also got in there, and they had no idea because the door was closed, locked, right? So you could see God and man there. Yeah. You just don't appear unless you're a ghost, or a, well, I use the word ghost, but you know, the spirit. He just showed up. And so like, well, how in the heck did he get in here? Well, touch me, I'm human. So I feel that I am a human guy, and then he just vanishes. And he did that throughout his ministry as well, right? They're ready to throw him off a cliff. That big giant crowd of people, and Jesus just, you know, feel the dreams is just kind of disappeared in the corn, right? <laughs> just kind of disappeared. So that's the way I, I was image the, you know, feel the dreams a lot of the cornfields, you know. As I drive around and see all the cornfields around, yeah. like, oh, there he goes, right, right through there. All right. Well, let's reread, please. John chapter one, verses one through three and verse fourteen. Please. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And, and, the, word be, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So from what point in time did the Son of God, the Word, exist? Beginning. From the beginning. That's kind of where we our discussion got led to. Because none of these words say Jesus, right? Yeah. 
And we understood that the word, capital W, is referring to Jesus as the word because we see the connection. And later on, he said the word becomes flesh. So we know that he actually existed and lived. And then I got on this whole thing about the class I teach at the college online and how people are trying to rationalize this whole thing. And that led us down about a 20-minute rabbit hole. Then we were done. <laughs> so I won't go that route again unless you're so curious. But it's trying to just wrap your mind around this whole thing. When it doesn't say the name Jesus, how do you know it's him? And as good Lutherans, what do we do? We look at other parts of Scripture to help us understand. So imagine if you didn't have the Old Testament. If you ignored it, how would you have any idea that this was Jesus? Or that if Jesus is in the Old Testament, his name is not mentioned, right? Although Joshua is Jesus in Hebrew, but it's not the same person. But we know that Jesus is mentioned in the Old Testament in the very first words of the Bible, in the beginning. He's referred to in the beginning in Genesis 1.1 and in John 1.1. We also know that Jesus is also referenced in the Old Testament as the the uh, angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord, right? I mean, I'm hoping somebody is going to remember that. But yeah, as in the Old Testament, he is referred to that as the angel of the Lord. But his name isn't used. So some people with a rational mind are thinking, how can that be Jesus if I don't read his name? Why is it veiled, they would say? Well, how come I can't just, he doesn't just say it? Well, we're not God, and I can't answer that question. But we look at other parts of Scripture to help us kind of understand what he's talking about. And for the record, the, just a side note, you remember Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden get tempted by a... How do we know that's the devil? Does it say it's the devil? No, Pastor, it doesn't. Well, how do we know? Satan does tempt us, but it never mentions the devil in Genesis, but it does in Revelation. The book of Revelation talks about the serpent in the garden is Satan. That's how we know. We didn't make that up. Where do we go to find the answer? In the Bible. Right. In the Word. It doesn't say, we just assume it, right? We teach it that way in Sunday school. We know that. That the serpent who tempted Adam and Eve. You know, all these questions, Pastor, that you brought up, it, it's a blessing that we uh, have been in church a long time, been in Sunday school, because it, it would be difficult for somebody like my friend, I won't go into that a lot, but, you know, to just to know about it as an adult and never had any prior, you know, you know we've been here all, most of us been here all our lives, or, it would be difficult. Yeah. To I, I don't try know. to figure things out. Right. So. Yeah, I don't know how that feels. All I've known is the yeah. church and the Bible and this stuff, and I've always just kind of grown up with it, and I, I, I like questioned it because that's just what I know. But you talk to people who come in from nothing, and it, I, I can't relate. Yeah. I don't know what that feels like. Why does the Jehovah Witness not have in John 1, the word capitalized. Oh, in their Bible? Yeah. Why do you think? Well, I, I was surprised. I mean, I used to knock on the door, mm -hmm. and they came, and I said, well, it says in John 1 that in the beginning was the word, you know, and I can't remember what he said, but I said, you know, that was Jesus. And I thought, why do you not recognize that? But he had a little kid with him, and I thought, I'm not going to be able to talk to the older guy. But the little kid's still questionable. Maybe he'll see what the kid's like. Right, because the Jehovah's Witness have is it the New World Translation. They have their own translation of the Bible. Did they show it to you? Well, I kind of took it out of his hand. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Actually, I have one in my office. But yeah, why do you think that they would not capitalize it or recognize it? Because they don't recognize Jesus. Yeah, oh, they don't even. Not as the Savior God's, of the world, yeah, not as God's son. son, as a, well, I would generically say a prophet or a good guy who roamed the earth, but Created. he really doesn't have anything to do with their religion. What religion are you? The Jehovah's Witnesses. 
their goal is to, uh, you know, get to heaven with the 144,000, yeah. as it says in Revelation. That's it. Those are the only ones are going to get in. Yeah. Everybody else is going to live on this peaceful earth after God destroys it and brings it all back. The new earth. So yeah, you, you want to get in, you got to knock on the doors because the more people you win, the higher you're going to get. I think they put a mark on our house so they don't come by anymore. They're like, nope, going that way. An alarm goes off on their phone, nope, don't hit that guy. You know, just keep on going. No? Good job, Charlie. Well, the funny thing about it was that afternoon I was at my daughter's house and they knocked on her door. I'm like, come to the door there. Like, <laughs> she, she's everywhere. <laughs> Man, I can't escape her. <laughs> Uh, what does the John tell us about the word in verse 14? That the word became and dwelt among us. He lived with them. He lived and breathed and all those other things that humans do. All right, read Matthew 1. This is, a, we're going to jump around, by the way, if you have your paper. Matthew 1, verses 18 to 23. We're going to jump around, talk, reminding ourselves of the story of Jesus' incarnation. Or becoming flesh. Matthew 1. Even though it's not Christmas, we're going to remind ourselves what happened at Christmas. 18. Christmas in July, right? That's a thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as she as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. To the end of our... To 23, please. Okay. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and, be, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. All right, a little review of Jesus' incarnation. Our question says, when Joseph first heard of Mary's pregnancy, what did he think? Well, he probably thought that she was unfaithful. Well, first of all, they were betrothed. What does that mean? Engagement. Right, and it took about a, how long? A year. About a year or so. So really, they were exclusive. Yeah. They were technically-ish married-ish. They weren't officially married until... That year was over, they had a little ceremony, and it was consummated. That's what made you married, for the record, back then. Um, but It's more than just being engaged. Right. They were the pre-stages of marriage. That they were, There was no stepping out on each other. There was no, I could break this off. It just didn't happen. And so he thought she was unfaithful. It made sense. She was pregnant, and it wasn't his, and she was a virgin. So what convinced him that Mary was not unfaithful? The angel. Right, angel came and told him that it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Wow. I've been real tough on the boys. <laughs> yeah. And girls. That would have been easier, wouldn't it? Why do you think they didn't wait till after they were married until she had that? Because when they got married, they would have consummated the marriage and she would then no longer be a virgin. A virgin. Because the prophet, which prophet said this? Isaiah. Isaiah, the prophet, prophesied that she would be a virgin. And you weren't a virgin any longer after you were officially married at your, on your wedding day because that's when you consummated the marriage. So she had to be a virgin. Oh, they could have, yeah. 
And we don't necessarily know the timeline in that year, but still he finds out that she's pregnant and it's not his. So he was going to do the right thing, though, wasn't he? Because what would have happened to her? Yeah, they would have thrown rocks at her until she died or got stoned, right? Because it's a disgrace. <laughs> well, I want to make sure you know which stone I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a, having a baby and got stoned? No, that's not. That's That'd be a different interpretation of the Bible. We don't want to talk about that. Yeah, it's when you tell that to teenagers, they're like, stone? Rocks? That's yeah. why I said rocks don't matter until she died. You can tell I talk to teenagers. Well, oh, Pastor, in, yes. that, in that verse there in Matthew, mm -hmm. we know it's more than just a uh, Engagement, what we are used to today, because it said he was going to divorce her. Right. So you get it. I mean, it was almost a done deal, right? Or, it was. Or, yeah. There was no right. It was like they were married, but it took a year long to. Yeah. That's what it was, and then the wedding lasted for about a week. Right. The wedding celebration lasted about a week or so. Yeah. That's been all and we right. talked about the wedding of Cana, and they ran out of wine. Remember the. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Luke chapter 1. We're going to jump to Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 35. We're going to find out how did Mary first react, finding out she was going to be pregnant. Even though she was betrothed to Joseph. Luke 1, verses 30 to 35, please. Yes, but well, let's see what God tells us first. We already know the answer, don't we? Anybody? I can read, but I'd rather you do it. All right, appreciate it. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. How far? Uh, 35, please. Uh, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give them to give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Thank you. So, Mary gets the news. First of all, why Mary? Of all the young ladies at that point in history. She found favor with the Lord. How old was she, can we guess? 16. It doesn't tell us. Just typical 15, 16, somewhere around. Today it seems a little odd, but then it didn't. Right. Yeah. It was yeah, very typical age of a young girl. So why Mary? She found favor with the Lord. Question. Please. Because I was raised Catholic, so I may not be wording this right. We're all born with original sin, are we not? Yes, ma'am. Was Mary born of original sin? Yes. yes. Was Jesus born of original sin? No. Why not if he was human? Great question. Yeah, that's a good question. But who's his father? Because he was baptized by his cousin John. He was. But who who's his father? That's the Why was why do we say Jesus was born without sin? Does anybody know? Yes. Well, one, because he's God. Two, because he's God. Three, because he's God. The, the reason, if you think about the reason why the Savior had to be born of a virgin, was because both Mary and Joseph, if they are the chosen earthly parents, are both sinful. And so if they had conceived a son, that son would have also been sinful. sinful. 
So Jesus was placed inside Mary's womb, had overshadowed her and put that baby in there as a perfect being. She was the vessel which carried this perfect baby. If she would have had, if Jesus would have had DNA from Mary and or Joseph, he would have been sinful. 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 Mm -hmm. We were always taught that Mary was immaculate conception. She was a full time one born without original sin. Mm -hmm. That she was? Yes. Yeah, when you hear immaculate conception, we think oh. of it's Jesus. No, but it's actually Mary who was oh. born that way. Oh. And we don't, the Bible doesn't tell us that. No. Tradition tells them that, that that's, that's and it makes, that's you want point. to be able to think that and feel great about that for her, but we as uh, Lutheran Protestants <laughs> would say, we don't have any proof of that. Oh, I got a bunch of those. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I went to four years of Catholic high school, so I did, uh, I got to hear and see and take all the classes of, of being a Lutheran in a Catholic presence, so I've I've been presented with a lot of it and understand why folks uh, say what they say, but then I also know what Martin Luther had to say, and we went with that. So, yes, please. Mary herself just said she was just normal girl, right? I mean, that was kind of her prayer. Like, just a virgin. I'm just. But why did God choose me? Not like I, I've been chosen since my youth, but I know I was going to bear the Messiah or something. That's no. not what her prayer was. Her prayer was a humble prayer of, mm -hmm. of God show favor on me and made me his vessel to do this. Mm -hmm. you know, she did have one thing in her favor. What was that? What's her that? Lineage? She was blessed. Her lineage, right? She came from the right line of people. Yeah. That was it, really. I mean, there was nothing. The Bible tells us she was blessed among women. Blessed is the fruit of my womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. I know the hell merits. Wow. I heard it every single day for four years. Lutherans, have you heard that from? <laughs> hail Mary, full of grace. We got him on The Lord is with me. <laughs> blessed art thou amongst men. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I did that a lot because he says that we're praying to Mary, and if you recite the hail Mary, nowhere does it say we're praying, we're asking her to pray for. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray, Pray for, for us sinners, sinners. now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Yeah, I heard it for four years straight, and I can't, I can't get it out of my head. I just. Are you allowed to say that in a Lutheran church? Um, he did. Am I allowed to say the Hail Mary in a Lutheran church in Bible study? Sure. I understand the the idea of saints. They they need or believe that someone. Uh, God loved them and showed them great favor, so why don't you put in a good word for me? We're not praying to them as Jesus. I mean, some maybe hold them in high esteem, which we believe we're all saints, but there are certain people that God has chosen, but it's the unworthiness to talk to God myself, so I want to have, I need someone to put in a good word for me. Pray for us. We used to pray. I went to St. John Bosco High School, and before football games, they would say, St. John Bosco, Pray for us, you know. Put in a good word for me, please. I, I could use your help. We know that and, Jesus puts in a good word. And for us. in the Protestant Lutheran tradition, we would say that you know Jesus is our mediator. There's only one mediator between God and man, it's His Son Jesus. Yeah. I don't need them to put in a good word for me. No. But we recognize saints. We recognize those in the church. We have feast days for saints. We just don't feel like we need to pray to them and ask them for help to put in a good word for us with God. That's all. But I still know the Hail Mary, and well, that probably never leave me. <laughs> but again, it's just a uh, memorizing now, part of it. How was it, excuse me, Pastor, yeah. how was it that you went to four years of Catholic school? I, I came from a small Lutheran school, about 100 kids, uh, double grades all the way up, and uh, a seventh and eighth grade class of about 25 or so. So my eighth grade class was about 12. And so the local public high school had 4,000 kids in it that I would have gone to where my brother and my sister went. And, I was freaked out. I was scared to death to go to a giant public high school. Uh, the nearest Lutheran high school was about 30 miles away, and I didn't want to go to that, so I had come into contact with this all-boys Catholic high school, um, 
which turned out to be my sister-in-law's older brother. Um, he went there as a Lutheran, and so I decided um, with my parents' blessing that I wanted to go to All Boys Catholic High School, about five miles from my house. And it just, um, I wanted to go to college, because I wanted to be a, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I knew I wanted to be a teacher in the seventh grade, a Lutheran school teacher. I hated school, for the record. I didn't like it. <laughs> but I couldn't see myself working in an office. I couldn't see myself sitting behind a desk, or I thought, heck, I, as, I think my sermon mentioned something about having summers off, and I got to play for a living. I loved it. I loved it. And so I wanted to go to college, and so um, going to a private Catholic high school is college prep. Got to maintain a minimum GPA. That's all college prep classes. It was just like going to school with a bunch of guys, and then um, I had church and youth group. I point to my wife because that's where, you know, we met at church in the sixth grade. So having no girls at school wasn't a distraction for me. You just went to class, you played your sports, and went home. Were teachers and nuns, or? Uh, no, we didn't have any nuns. We had priests and lay people. Wow. Yeah. Most of the nuns, uh, there were nuns that there was, a, there was always a, a sister school. So there's an all girls Catholic school where the nuns taught. Um, but they were mostly, and the nuns a lot of times teach in the parochial schools. But no, they were uh, priests and then just lay, just, well, lay people as well. Did you? We used to have a Catholic school here in Humboldt, and some of my friends that went there said the nuns were strict. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. the priests were too, right? Yeah, actually, it was, I mean, it was an admissions process. They just didn't take everybody, you know, you had to apply, and you, you paid tuition, and it was. Uh, okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, that's a big deal. It's not just, they didn't just take anybody that wanted to come in. You know, a lot of times, kids would come in from public schools, you know, I couldn't make in the public schools, they put them in a Christian school because then they'll be completely different and we can fix them. Which, I take that from a, a Lutheran perspective because when we taught, I taught Lutheran school, we get kids from public schools who just couldn't make it. So we're going to put them in a Christian school and that kid's still going to be a kid and do the things they did in public school. It's just now it's, they're paying for it, uh, paying for tuition. And we tried to help, but long story short, um, you had to be admitted. So they didn't just take anybody. I enjoyed it. I look back now, I said, I'm not going to change anything. I wish I would have played football. I didn't play football. I wish I would have, but I played water polo. I was a much better swimmer back then. I've been, yeah, I swam, played water polo, and a little bit of basketball, but I enjoyed I enjoyed my time there. Did you recite the prayers? Um, the Hail Mary, I did not. I just, I didn't, I asked my pastor about it, and I just didn't feel comfortable, because I was not asking Mary to pray for me. But I stood up when everybody else stood up, and I did it. I took all the classes on morality and sacraments, and I only had one issue my whole four years was in, a, I, think, I, mean, I told you this already, and I took a world religions class as a senior, which everybody had to take, and I had to write a paper about Martin Luther and how he screwed up the church, <laughs> of all people. <laughs> so I went to my teacher and said, I'm a Lutheran, I can't, I can't write that, I don't, I don't believe that, and so he allowed me to do something else, but that was it. I wasn't judged on my faith or anything, but I learned a lot about morality. I learned about what the seven sacraments are in the Catholic Church, and I just learned about it. But I, I felt more comfortable in a Christian setting than in a public setting. I actually never went to public school at all. My kindergarten and first grade I did. But I went Lutheran school, Catholic high school, Lutheran college, and Lutheran seminary. I just, was it for me? My wife went all the way through public and loved it. Until I went to college, of course, but just I just wasn't for me. I was way more comfortable. I didn't want to go to a non-denominational type Christian school. I was pretty dug into the Lutheran Church. I'm not gonna lie about that. Lutheran in the womb, we claim. I just but being going to Catholic school and they had to wear ties on certain days. I just I liked the whole culture. Had to be clean shaven, hair off the collar. I had to grow a pretty decent beard by about my sophomore year of high school, so. I busted a couple times, had to get the ra dry razor in the bathroom because the dean saw me with some... <laughs> Anyway, uh, oh, we're not going to make it. <laughs> Without reading Isaiah 14, I'll be happy to talk about it. Oh, I love it. I'm not, I mean, uh, number five says, this miraculous birth had been foretold long ago, long before. What did the prophet Isaiah say the Messiah would be called? Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. On the back, 
You want to rush through this or you want to just finish it next week? Next week. Okay. I don't want to rush through this. No. It's, it's too important for us to understand. No, we're not in any big hurry at that point. Anything else? The bells are going to ring me out here in about a minute or so, so I don't want to get rung out by the bells. So did the, how big was the Catholic school? It was about 850 boys. That's a lot. And nowadays it is very hard to get in, and their football team has been ranked number one in the nation probably in the last six or seven years. With modern-day Catholic high school, also an all-boys Catholic high school in Santa Ana, if you look at the high school football rankings, they're always in the top five in the country. Because you don't have to live in the area, you can get kids from... Oh, you're picking the kids for sports. You know, it's yeah, you can never escape it, but that's what it is. The quarterback, actually, uh, Josh Rosen, went to the NFL. He played at UCLA. He went to Bosco. And the current quarterback for Clemson, DJ Uyangalele, went to St. John Bosco. There's probably about 40 players in the NFL now who went to their wow. my high school. But they are... Uh, they're uh they're very big into getting kids into D one schools. Because they didn't very have it when you went, right? Uh well they had football, but we were not good. <laughs> you know, water polo actually did better than, than football did, so we'll go with that. But wow. now they're nationally recognized and it's I knew I was gonna get wrong out. Yeah. How about we pray? Yeah. We thank you, dear God, for our time together. Discussion is a, is a wonderful thing. We thank you for your word and for Jesus as we are reminding ourselves of how he became flesh and the miracle of him coming to earth to come and to live and to save us from our sins. Be with us as we continue our day today in worship. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody.